Do you believe that uh, irrespective, and why I'm asking you this is because you made a very important point the last time we had the interview. You said that India should not, or the government should not sit back and say, oh, we are growing at 5%, we are still better off than the rest of the world. You made the point that for India to ex explore and to really exploit its potential, it will be 8 or 9%. That's where we should get to. I mean, that's nirvana. I mean, that's absolutely true. I mean, there's a moral imperative for us if you want to get a, you know, youth employed if you want because to Because if we don't do yeah. that, the same demographic yeah. could actually hit us. <laughs> it, would, it's, it would bite us uh, in the other way. And it's a historical opportunity. There's nothing if we make decisions opening up FDI, labor reform, you know, plugging in infrastructure. You know, I think we can do that, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's extremely, extremely important. I don't want to understate that. I think that's, you know, obviously the missing link in all this, you know, so. But you believe irrespective of that, India will chug along? I think so. I think... Uh, we're destiny's child right now. You know, India is at, in, a, in the world's sweet spot, you know, uh, somewhere between China and America. A lot of focus on India. Uh, democracy, our demographics, all of them are propelling forward. So, see, all I can tell you is that when I started, uh, index was 700. It's not 21,000. You know, it's been 20 years and the index is up 30x. So, you know, it's pretty foolish to go short. And you expect the same trend? going forward, except I, for a few blips here and there, which is the way markets yeah, are, but yeah. you're saying trajectory-wise, there's only one way to go. Once we know, I mean, we can go back and study yeah. almost any country you want and say what happens when GDP per capita goes to $4,000 or $5,000, and we will get there maybe in the next five years, seven years, we'll start getting there. We're already $1,800, 2000 There's an explosion across every category, especially in consumers, you know, travel, education, consumption. They've all explored. I mean, you know, these numbers will look silly at this point. I mean, some of the aggregate numbers of, say, ketchup sales we have in India, to give you an out-of-the-box example, seem almost silly to me. I mean, you know, does it, is it consumed in South Bombay or is it consumed across India? I mean, the numbers seem so dramatically small. But, so they were all explored in India. So, you know, a good, high-quality business, which has integrity of management, decent cash flow, in my opinion, the next 10 years will be worth its weight in gold. You want to keep and stick to that business because you might think it's overpriced, you might think it's expensive, and you get a lot more expensive, which is what happened in the Nifty 50 stocks, by the way. You know, yeah. I'm not saying it in well. I mean, all these bubbles get up to a point where it's unsustainable. But at this point, the public is not even buying. Bub bubbles become unsustainable when the public is rampantly buying these uh, stocks or you know, making foolish pronouncements. Right now, the public is in the disinvestment of selling more. So they will have to come back to the market and then they'll have to inflate it beyond reasonable levels. That's a long cycle away. So you believe that there is tremendous upside from Tehran, from where we are? I I'm not asking you two months, three months, but let's talk years here. I, I believe there is. I think great stocks, even from this point, will compound at a superior rate than inflation. You've seen so many governments come and go. You've seen coalitions. You've seen the way the Indian polity and governance has worked for more than two and a half decades. The concern today, in many ways, is that are we losing direction over the next one year? But again, when I hear you say that, factor in all of this and yet it was 30x. Are you saying that in many ways the governance or the government, which one is it, becomes irrelevant when you take a long term view? At, at, at this stage, yes. At this stage in our uh, development, yes. I mean, you remember the last time the UPA government came up with about 20%. Before that, the communists were had saved power and the market was down. But the index kept making new highs once it reacted to that. You know, So, it's hard to say what the market latches on to at what point. Uh, I can't predict that. But what we know right now is that liquidity is good and there is a basket of Indian companies that is doing very well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, short of that, I mean, short of doing extortionary tax rates or, you know, huge changes in policy, I think it's best to remain in equities. Look, you know, gold has had its smattering fall. It's had a great run, but, you know, it's no longer an attractive asset class. You know, real estate... I can't justify the prices in a lot of real estate, especially in, in, in Mumbai, and it's not necessarily very liquid. So where are you going to put your money? And the government has made, as I never get tired of telling you, tax-free dividends, tax-free long-term capital gains. That's the best way to create wealth in India. You know, I'm amazed people don't, you know, shout that from the rooftops. I mean, dividends are tax-free in India. Interest rates are charged at 30%. Dividends are tax-free. And long-term capital, long capital gains tax above a year, which is not Which is 0%. I mean... Wow, you can buy, you know, stocks yielding 2-3% and the capital gains is also tax-free. I mean, it's a no-brainer according to me.
does it really kind of uh, sadden you, therefore, that why is there, I know you'll blame the media for it, most people do, but the pessimism being so much within us here, whereas people outside there seem to be bigger believers of India. No. <laughs> Would I blame the media? I'm bullish in the media. <laughs> no, I know that. I'm just coming to that. So. <laughs> that, that apart. Uh, no, I mean, it puzzles me. It actually puzzles me. The, the amount you know, people are willing to buy on a house or, you know, buy in property or put in gold is, you know, um, it puzzles me. I, I really don't know. I've become too cynical. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, equity holders have been rewarded. I mean, like I told you, we're up 30x in the last 30 years. I mean, you know, what is evidence that you want? I mean, the tax treatment is favorable, the equity movement. Yes, it will go through its volatile cycles. And I think maybe if you could control those, you know, when the index plunges from 21,000 to 10,000, those kind of volatility. Because see, every day the price is flashed on a screen or a paper or a net uh, computer before you. So people get rattled out of that. Whereas the price of the house is not quoted every day. So people, you know, tend to ignore that. So, you know, perhaps in the, it's in the nature of market. So what is required is more education. What is required is uh, more. But my personal belief is that if you're young in India and not investing in equity, you're making a huge mistake for your financial future. Just to take that example, and I remember you gave me this example of Infosys the last time. And that time, too, the results were very bad. The stock had fallen and you said take a 15-year view. Here is a company that's got created. You can't... And we saw the same story playing out in the last quarter where almost half of that company's value was knocked off. 25%, today. yeah. Uh, how would you explain that to an investor? I mean, stock picking is an art. If it was easy, everyone would pick stocks and uh, make money. So, you know, companies, uh, you know, go through. But every crisis, you know, c creates an opportunity. I mean, Mr. Malia went through a series of troubles recently, um, but the stock of uh, United Spirits gone up from 500 to 2,500, you know. So in the same period, the stock's up 5x and, you know, look at the trouble that his empire has been through. So, you know, sometimes that crisis creates that buying opportunity to buy. I can't give a one-label fit all saying that every time there's a crisis, you buy. But generally, great quality companies bought at, you know, in a crisis situation will tend to reward you over the long term. You, you, you actually explained, you said... People who say that Infosys is dead are exaggerating its death to quote Mark Twain. That would be the same words you would use even now? I would. I mean, you, you look at And TCS. I'm taking this as an example. I'm not dealing TCS with you. TCS is, uh, you know, sitting at you know, a lifetime high even as you speak. So Infosys is going through, uh, you know, its period of pain right now. And, you know... But you would still believe in these companies, oh, would you? Without a doubt. I mean, you, the software, you, if you don't believe in uh, yes. India, you don't believe in software. It's, as, to me, it's as obvious as that. I mean, and this is the industry that has given us so much. And oh. none, none of that competitive advantage is lost. <coughs> Infosys is going through its period of trouble, and they'll pull out of it. The last time we spoke, Ramesh, two or three interesting themes that you were looking at. You talked about digitization. You talked about logistics. Uh, where you said that perhaps companies and stocks have been really bashed out of shape and there is an opportunity for the long term. Are, are these two still broader themes that you're focusing on or are there any newer themes you've introduced? Well, let's look at media. Uh, Vivek, since we last said that, um, uh, you know, you try to find an emergent sector where you can put some money into there and you can sit on it for a long period of time. Media is as bombed out a sector as I've seen when I talked to you last time. Yeah. Since then, the digitization rollout phase one, two has happened, uh, and the stocks have responded. A lot of the media stocks have already doubled uh, in their valuation. The, the, the call on media depends on a triage of values that we track. One is, of course, digitization happening, which is now rolling out. Second is subscription revenue starting to increase, which will start now, because as you have addressability, you'll be able to collect the money, which was going to the LCO, the local cable operator. So you get more and more subscription revenues coming in. The third leg of the triage that we talked about is increase in ad rates. Okay. Some of Indian's ad rates in the electronic media are pathetically low compared to, say, even the print media. Now, over time, I'm willing to bet you that will change. And in a business with, you know, very low variable costs, when ad rates go up, it will come straight, straight to the bottom line. So maybe it will take another year or two before we'll see that. But if you look at the valuation that the market uh, is giving to these media companies, I think the valuations are pathetic. I mean, you look at the top line, bottom line, you don't know what the what the difference is. 
And what I find actually funny is that the most media people are very <laughs> circumspect when I say that I'm <laughs> bullish on media, which of course makes me even more bullish because when insiders themselves don't understand the value. See, these are great businesses. They're great cash flow businesses. Go study in Philippines, Indonesia, America, what the value of broadcasting businesses, the cable businesses, and you'll be astonished at some of the market caps and valuations come out with. And India has gone through many industries in the same cycle, you know, whether it's cement, whether it's, uh, you know, um, FMCG stocks. So I think media will catch fire. The stocks have had a decent run, I think, since we last talked. I think a lot of the stocks are 50 to 100% uh, double. But I still think the journey just begun. There's a long, long way to go for this media. So, uh, you know, I mean, you, you look at it another way. Lever's putting 30,000 crores into India. GlaxoSmith is putting a billion dollars, all right? The flip side of the argument is that these guys are going to do business in India. And how does a consumer company do business in India? How do they introduce themselves to, adver- uh, to consumers? Through advertising. Mm. So it's a natural market. You can just see all these MNCs putting in such amount of money in India. BMW, Mercedes, Glaxo, uh, Diageo. They will all have to come to the consumers and sell their products in a capitalist society. And the most efficient way designed to do it is on an electronic screen, whether you do it on the net or now you do it on uh, television station or on the net and most a lot of the broadcasting companies now exposure across the spectrum so you know it, to me we just need you know ad rates to go up in India and then GDP will clink along at 6-7% and suddenly these companies will be making more money than they know what to do with and logistics logistics <coughs> we're waiting for GST to happen mm-hmm. valuations are pretty pathetic but again it's a complete play on GDP the minute GDP perks up these companies will perk up Valuations are pathetic, so you know you, I'd buy them at these prices uh, oh. for whatever they're worth. But my sense is, until GST happens, for media to work, digitization had to happen. That has happened. For logistics, GST is, has to happen. That hasn't happened yet. And you're still staying away from financials. Um, you know, <coughs> I have some. Exciting. Yeah, you know, in some <laughs> sectors you don't get. I mean, you have so many competencies. But you know, consumer. That the big theme I think remains consumer. The overweight on my portfolio, India globally, happens to be consumers, irrespective of what the valuations currently are. Yeah, I mean, like I told you, it's not necessarily a P game in my view. It's a demand supply game. And uh, the, the, I think the largest holder of Lever, the largest holder of Lever owns, is LIC in India. It's own 3% single institution. And I can't see how they can tender. Because if they tender, Lever is a part of every index, MSCI, Sensex, Nifty, every index known is there. They would have one of the great index stocks they would not have. So the, it's almost... Surprise! It would really surprise me if LIC tendered, and the rest is scattered: 500 shares, 1,000 shares here or there. People who never sold Lever are not going to sell Lever just because up another 50 bucks. So, my sense is, my sense is that uh, Lever will not get uh, the quantity 20% plus that they so desire. So, and like I told you, when I go back and study global stocks, all these stocks, consumer stocks, Coca-Cola, you know, Campbell Soup, Kimberly Clark, all of them are you know, breaking out of long-term basis, which technically suggests that the prices are headed significantly higher. Final question, Ramesh. I know you never make predictions about which way an index is going to go, so I'm not going to ask you that. But there is a lot of feeling that sometime during this year we could take out all-time highs on this market. I'm not going to ask you end of this year because we're pretty much middle. But do you think we're closer to that kind of a scenario than further? I think so. I think liquidity will just uh, propel us out of this scenario. I would have earlier suggested to you that we would flirt with the new highs but not take it out. But increasingly it looks at the amount of skepticism that I see that there's no retail participation. But the liquidity is massive and supply is limited at this point. So we could definitely take out the all old times high. Um, my broader point is that it's not particularly relevant at this point because we're not having a typical broad-based bull market going on. We're having a selective bull market in a few sectors. So it's much more profitable to look at uh, the the sectors that you're bullish on rather than, say, make a broad call on the market. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much, Ramesh, for coming back and talking to our viewers here on Bloomberg TV India. That was Ramesh Damani. We take a quick break. Lots more coming up on Bloomberg TV.